Imagine this. We wake up one morning and discover a giant asteroid is on a direct course for Earth. Its impact is going to cause huge loss of life, a global ecolog ecological disaster, and the end of the world as we know it. What would we do? Hollywood movies would have us believe we would all come together as a human race. We would send very good-looking drilling teams into space. <laughs> but the thing is, we don't need to dream about asteroids. The threat is real, and it's called climate change. The world is already contending with rising sea levels, species extinction, and extreme weather events all of which are already affecting human society, our society. And incredibly, we've known about this threat since the late 1970s. But as F. Sherwood Rowland, who's a Nobel Prize winner, said back in the 80s, what is the use of having developed a science so well it can make predictions if all we're willing to do is stand around and wait for them to come true? Just let that sink in for a moment. We have been standing around for decades, waiting for the figurative asteroid to hit our planet. We need a global, unified, and urgent response. So the question is, how can we get every individual, business, government, and community to take urgent action against the climate emergency? How can we make a global problem feel like my problem? Just like those Hollywood movies, we need to tell a story. A story that feels so personal and so actionable, it just can't be ignored. In some ways, storytelling is what I do for a living. I work in marketing communications. This sometimes surprises people. As marketers, we coax people into buying things they don't always want or need. You could say, we're the reason you bought that waffle maker that's collecting dust at the back of your cupboard or the shoes you don't wear, or the gym equipment you don't use. But I'm also really passionate about sustainability. I cycle to work, I have a worm farm, I've even been known to make my own toothpaste. I'm also a member of an eco-village, where I one day hope to build my tiny dream house out of salvaged timber and solar panels. So how do I reconcile these two very different worlds? To put it simply, marketing has a power to create change. Change for bad, products we don't need, and change for good, a better planet. I want to focus on marketing for good, the power that marketing has to create positive behavior change. Because we've all got a fight on our hands, and if we don't all come together quickly, our great-grandkids are not going to know about the hairy-nosed wombat, the snow leopard, or even the humble waffle. So how can we use the dark arts of marketing to communicate the need for urgent climate action? One, we need to know our audience. Two, we need to find them. And three, most importantly, we need to craft the message. We live in an overwhelming world with information overload. We all receive thousands of messages every day about products, people, and causes. What's going to make someone stop and take notice? If we understand someone deeply, and I mean really deeply, their hopes, their fears, their ambitions, and their anxieties, we can talk directly to them in their language about something they actually care about. People have different reasons for engaging with climate change. Take Carlos and Tanya here. Carlos is a busy dad. He likes to listen to the news on his morning commute. He worries about climate change and wishes he could do more to help, but he doesn't really know where to start, and he worries about his kid's future. He also happens to be my boss, and he's here in the room tonight. And there's Tanya. Tanya's a writer in her early 30s. She doesn't eat meat, and even before COVID, avoided air travel. She collects her soft plastics to take to recycling, and talks to our friends about sustainability a lot. In a recent survey of over 1,500 individuals and 600 businesses in New South Wales, it was found that the Carlos and Tanyas of the state make up 55% of us. That's over half of us, and that is great news. I'll tell you why. 
Both Carlos and Tanya believe it's their duty to protect the environment, live sustainably, and leave a lighter footprint. Then we have those who are more functionally engaged with the topic of climate change, who make up about a third of the state population. Take my good friend Yash here. He's a bricklayer, and he often comments about the waste he sees on construction sites. Soraya is a general manager of a small business. She understands that being sustainable and energy efficient makes good business sense. She's installed energy efficient lighting throughout the office and a shower cubicle as well. We can see that the communication needs of emotionally and functionally motivated people are very different. Carlos and Tanya want to know how their decisions are contributing to a better future whereas Yash and Soraya want to make smart, financially savvy choices. Where do you fit? Every individual and group will sit in a different place on the motivational axis and will have different reasons for engaging with climate change. So now we know who we're talking to, where do we find them? And the key question to ask here is, how active are they on the topic of climate change? Writer Tanya and proactive general manager Soraya are actively looking for information to do with climate change and energy efficiency. They're using podcasts, websites, and reports to find the information they're looking for. To speak to Busy Dad Carlos and bricklayer Yash, we'll need to rely on communication channels that they come to natively, naturally, every day in each day of their life. So now we know who our audience are. Now we know how we're gonna find them. Next, most importantly, how are we gonna craft a message? A message that feels so personal, so relevant, they will take action. And let's take an example. We've got a simple objective to get more individuals and businesses to switch to 100% renewable energy. And let's take two very different audiences. Carlos, our busy dad, and Soraya, our general manager. Carlos believes in climate change. He worries about it deeply and wants to do more to help, but he's unlikely to spontaneously switch to 100% renewable energy with a potential cost increase. We need to make climate change feel local and relevant to him. With this piece of communication, we're asking Carlos to consider, what do I have to lose because of climate change? He thinks about the loss of biodiversity in his coastal community and what his kids' future might hold. Once we have Carlos's attention, we can follow up with a message of hope. Learn how you can take easy actions in the fight against climate change. This sequence of messaging triggers Carlos to take action, and he switches to 100% renewable energy. Now let's consider Soraya. She's looking for practical solutions that make sense for her business. She's not particularly engaged in climate change, but she can understand that sustainability makes sense. With this piece of communication, we're demonstrating to Soraya that by switching her business to 100% renewable energy, we're appealing to both her current and her future employees. We're delivering a message of hope. She thinks about what she can gain, why it makes sense for her business, and she switches to 100% renewable energy in the office. In a recent study by Robin L. Nabby at the University of California, it was found that gain and loss framing can be used to evoke hope and fear respectively. And when we deliver emotive content followed by practical action-based outcomes, we get even better results. Now, I don't believe that storytelling through images, videos, and short text replaces the need for technical information and reports on climate change. But I do believe the principles of marketing can be used to access audiences which are otherwise untapped and bring them along on the journey with us. There's a group I've not yet mentioned. They're typically under the age of 34. They live in metro areas and are often male. They believe in climate change, but have not yet decided on the actions they're willing to take in the fight against the climate emergency. They sit on the fence in virtually every respect to climate change. This silent 12% can easily be swung into being climate champions through education and emotive content. Good marketing recognizes differences, inconsistencies, and idiosyncrasies. Let me give you a personal example. I've been passionate about sustainability for as long as I can remember. At school, I was the kid who took food packaging home to make sure it was recycled in the right bin. And yet, it's only this year 
well into my 30s, that I realize the individual impact any one person can have by choosing where their superannuation is invested. Now I know that there is $175 billion worth of Australians' retirement funds invested in 22 companies who are still expanding the scale of the fossil fuel sector. Now I know that all my cycling and composting put together has nowhere near the impact that I could have by switching my super. And I'm pleased to say I made the switch, but just like Carlos, I needed a little push. And this is what gave me that push. I saw a social media post shared by a climate champion from my eco-village after she switched her super. This post spoke to me. It spoke to me in a way that I just couldn't ignore. The consensus in the scientific community is we have just over a decade to limit the global temperature rise to two degrees or less and prevent the collapse of the natural world. Climate change is the figurative asteroid on a direct course for Earth. But I have hope we can alter its course. We just need enough people to act. And that's where marketing can come in. We need to communicate the technical solutions together with the emotional story if we're going to spur governments and businesses to act faster. And as individuals, we need to make room for the conversation at the dinner table, at the kids' pickup, at the pub. That conversation might be difficult. It might even spark emotion. But as we know, emotion can drive action, and our future demands action now. Thank you, and don't forget to switch your super.